part of this Asia CEO Forum and being a product of, uh, of course, the <laughs> Asia CEO Awards, I would gladly contribute to what you endeavor to rally people and that's towards uh, globalized uh, citizenship and competencies beyond the current situation even prior to COVID. You know, if we have to understand something or if we have to appreciate something, the COVID experience, the pandemic, should have taught us how to reflect upon how we're learning rather than just how we're navigating. You know, uh, I would like to share my, 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 my prepared program for you because I'll be showing uh, some frameworks by which we can guide ourselves into becoming a learning, you know, a learning persons, learning persons in the global perspective. I have entitled my presentation as the science of adult learning, intentional holistic. I emphasize the words intentional and holistic because to adults, learning should not be accidental. It should be intentional. And I'll be presenting to you some framework. The thing is, will the square peg fit in the round hole? That, that's a question. It's a beautiful question we need to ask in the beginning of this presentation. Will the square peg fit in the round hole? Okay, and I want you to give an answer to yourself. Okay, and uh, the answer to this question actually is not a yes or a no. The answer is it depends upon what it is made of. If this is made of wood or made of steel, definitely it's not going to fit. But if this is uh, made of pliable materials or soft materials, I'm pretty sure it's going to fit. So if you are asked the questions, are you learning to learn? The, question, the answer is not a yes or a no. The answer is it depends upon what you are made of. The thing is, how do we learn? According to Alvin Toffler, of course, the great author, he said that the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write the way we define literacy in the past, but those who cannot learn and learn and relearn. And this pandemic experience must have brought us into a lot of opportunities that only to learn, but also to unlearn and relearn. Look at this conference, for example. You may be somewhere, I'm in QC, Richard is somewhere out there in the world, and Rebecca is as well, but we are together trying to relearn learning in the way we never knew before. I mean, we never were comfortable before. And let's get, be guided by this, this, you know, this statement that literacy depends on our ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn. The question is, are you literate for the 21st century? Now, let me ask this very basic question. Where do we start learning? Do we know what we do not know? That's a question. Do we know what we do not know? The answer is no. Because we don't know it, then we don't know what we don't know. Because we're in the level called unconscious incompetence. We are not conscious of our incompetence. And then suddenly, suddenly realize, I don't know what I don't know, and guess what? If you don't know what you don't know, you actually don't care. And because you don't care for what you don't know that you don't know, then you're comfortable. Don't you think that if you are in the unconscious incompetence level, you are actually very comfortable not knowing what you're supposed to know? And then suddenly you wake up and said, oh my God, and you realize that you don't know, then you shift to the next. You become conscious of your incompetence. Like you realize that you don't know how to drive because you just got the key and run it and bang to the garage. And there you have a realization that, well, I don't know how to drive. And a conscious incompetence. The question is, are you comfortable when you are conscious of your incompetence? The answer is no, because your tendency to search for learning comes in. All right. Then after that, imagine when you were first learning how to drive and when you learned driving first time, you knew how to drive. You knew all the rules. You knew all the things you had to do. But what, where were you? You were in the conscious competence. You were so conscious. There is a hump. I should turn to this, to this gear. I'm, I'm going highway. I will turn to this gear. And you know, you were so conscious of your competence that you know step by step what to do. But mind you, Agree or disagree with me? You were not comfortable. Why? Because you're too conscious of what you actually know. That's the level called conscious competence. And then, if you have been driving for years, I'm pretty sure you become, everything comes automatic. Okay? You see a hump, you don't even think that there is a hump. You shift to the gear that is needed for the hump, and so on and so forth. Why? Because we shift to what we call unconscious competence. 
we don't anymore know what we know. It will just come to us in a force of a habit. And this goes in cycle. And of course, if you don't know what you know, you also become comfortable with it. The question is, if these are four stages of learning, which of these are more dangerous? Think a little, I'll give you a little time. Think of if these are four stages into learning, which do you think of these are dangerous? The answer is this, those who are, which are in red. Because if you don't know what you don't know, you also don't know what you know that makes, learn, that makes it very dangerous because you're just moving automatically in the force of habits. And that's very dangerous. Today, I will present to you a model. Uh, this is the adult learning framework. And this is not complicated. And this is not even you know, deep racket science. This is just a practical analysis of how we live our lives every day as adults. Because we learn differently when we were young and we learn differently now that we're old. Okay, the adult learning framework begins with what? Experience. You just go with the flow of your experience. Sometimes experiences don't give us much choice, but we just find ourselves in that experience. But most of us will just have it end up there. I experience something, it ends there. No, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. There should be something you should do after that. You should know how to reflect. Reflect upon those experiences. For example, if you have difficulty going to sleep at night, I won't have any difficulty sleeping at night because when I close my eyes, all I have to do is to rewind the thing that happened to me for the day and ask myself, if I would go back to this day, which of these would have I done better? And that ushered, ushers me into reflection. Why am I reflecting? I'm reflecting because I want to theorize. I want to make some conclusion. I want to make some decision. That reflection is not passive reflection, but it is an active reflection that tomorrow I'll be a better person because today I rewinded my day and I want to be better tomorrow. And I become a better person every day. And it's intentional again. It has to be intentional. And the moment you theorize, then you should be ready to do the next step. And that is to experiment, to try the theory that you develop and to make decisions which to do and which not to do, how to do better. And that experimentation leads you to another experience. Sounds easy, sounds simple, but it engages you into a lot of thinking and a lot of values and a lot of skills. The first skill you have to develop is the valuing skill. What value are you giving your experience on a day-to-day? -day? For example, you took a grub taxi going to your office. What do you normally do? Some, most of us will just be trapped on what we already do. But don't you think that that is an experience that can provide you some valuing skills, opportunity for you to learn from that driver whom can actually give you a lot of lessons. But because sometimes we don't value the experience, we don't get the most of it. And the reflection will challenge our thinking skills. Are we able to think? Do we know how to think? And the moment we learn how to think and thinking process leads us into decision. Now I can decide because I am basing my decision not just on feelings, but on thinking, on my ability to think. And that decision leads you to what? The acting skills. Now you're able to act. But how many adults would actually start with the valuing of that experience, thinking through reflection, deciding based on some conclusions, and acting and willing to experiment on, on, on new things? You know, we were told that if you're... You know, the distance by which you can travel forward is only proportional to the distance that you can look back. And that's the value of reflective learning. And this is a framework which can guide you. Enjoy and value every experience. Reflect through it by thinking. Make a decision. Act on it. And then you become bigger the next day. And if this becomes part of your day-to-day -day life, then you will be better every day. I would like to present to you another Another framework, and I love framework because you know I, I'm sure you took a picture of that and reflect upon yourselves. How can you benefit from this little conversation, short conversation we have? Whole brain literacy, you know, uh, posits that the left brain is the logical brain. Our left brain is logic. It loves, you know, processes. 
it, the left brain is into analysis, it's into numbers, it's into proofs, it's into computation. While the right brain is more into the creative side of our thinking, it's imagination, it's a vision, it's, if it's a song, it's not the lyrics, but it's the music, it's the harmony, it's, it's the dreaming state, that, that's the right side of the brain. While the left is more of that logical, you know, the, 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 you know, the numbers, the words. Now, the whole brain literacy framework can engage you into a thinking that would, and learning that will be complete. It all begins with this. You have to decide on purpose. When you make a decision as adults, we have to decide on purpose. What is the purpose of this decision? What do I really want? Begin with an end in mind, one of the seven habits. After you do that, then when you tap to the right, I'm sorry, you tap to the left. How do you tap to the left? Decode certainty. Because the left brain wants to decode. And what would it want to decode? Certainty. Certainty. Get evidences. What do I need to know? What information should I gather before I can even proceed to the next? Because you have to satisfy you know, the, the prodding of the left. Because the left wants to decode and the left wants certainty. Then you shift to the right. You discover creativity. What else? Given all this information, given all this data, close your eyes, tap the right side and discover some creativity in it. What else can be done beyond what I know had been done? What else can be given as solutions aside from the solutions that are already available? But wait, that's the right and the left connecting. But there is something deeper than, the, than just the superficial thinking of the right and the left brain. You have to go into discerning that relationship. Discerning relationship is also the acts of the right brain. You discern relationship. Whom do I know who can help me do this? What relationships can I tap to get these things done? And then you are expanding what the right gives you as a certainty, what your, or rather the left discovers you as certainty. Then the discovery of the right brain's creativity, then you get deeper into discerning that relationship that exists and are available for you. And let's go deeper into the left. Then that's when you determine productivity and result. How is that? Isn't it that you started with the decision to make a, to, for a purpose? What is my purpose? What are the information that are available for me too so that I, I feel secure seeing the logic of what I'll do? But you don't want to be trapped with that left brain certainty. You want to go right, discover creativity. What else can be done? What is beyond what I know? But there are things beyond thinking. It's about relationship. How do I deepen this? And after that, how do I prove that I am productive? And what result will I measure? Then you go back to the left. After that, you go back and you go back to the decision and deepen the purpose. Because you know what? The purpose is the big why. And you will agree with me. If the why is big enough, the how is going to be easy. And not many of us would begin with a big why. And that's why the how becomes difficult. And following this framework, following this framework, you are sure that you're tapping the whole brain from the left that decodes to the right that discovers and to the right that discerns and to back to the left that determines result. And finally, I would like to explain that I'm very confident that we will be over this and this pandemic can be actually a trigger for humanity to be better. And the best part of human nature, and if you want to learn something, we have to begin with the best part of our human nature. And the worst part of our human nature is our creativity. No machine can challenge the creativity of our human nature. The second one is empathy. We feel what others, other people feel, but we maintain the objectivity. That's the difference of sympathy and empathy. We feel what the person feels, but we want to maintain the objectivity. That's why we also see that left side of it, okay? The left brain in it. And stewardship, ladies and gentlemen, stewardship. We're stewards of this universe. We're stewards of, of each other. And I think these are the three best parts of human nature. If we want to learn from this experience, we have to learn and be anchored on this best nature. And the new 
collective and moral consciousness based on shared sense of destiny. And I would like to congratulate Asia CEO because you know, Richard and Rebecca has been pushing this country forward. But unless we see that shared sense of destiny as a first world country, then we'll never see it in our lifetime. And as I always say in every end of my lecture, you have to color outside the lines once in a while if you want to make your life a masterpiece. We have one life to live. What is your masterpiece? Thank you so much.